So I'm back in the treehouse making content. Um, if you ever followed me on TikTok, you know that occasionally I go to my kid's treehouse to make content. So um, I like coming up here. It's by myself. It's quiet. I built this treehouse. It's a pretty cool treehouse. Um, so this is where I am. I have a couple of questions today from subscribers that I want to address, and I'm going to address them both in this video. Um, I think they're both really good questions and give me an opportunity to provide really educational answers. So the first question was, if we are at maximum refining capacity, why are we continuing to drill so much? Um, so there is a basic misunderstanding here about how the oil and gas industry works. So let me explain. There is a thing called a production decline curve. And every well drilled everywhere has a production decline curve. And what that means is basically every day that well is producing less and less and less oil. And in the U.S., with unconventional wells, those production decline curves are very high. Um, of course, every well is unique and has its own production decline curve, but these decline curves are pretty consistent across geologic basins, like the Permian Basin. Um, the Permian Basin has about a 40% first year pr production decline curve. Um, the Bakken has about a 35% first year production decline curve. What that means is you drill a new well and you complete it. It produces for one year. After that year, it is producing on average 40% less than what it was producing when it started. So you drill a well, it's producing a thousand barrels a day. You can expect that well to only be producing 600 barrels a day a year from then. Does that make sense? And, and that is, that is the case across the entire United States and all over the world. There are basins around the world that have very low production decline curves, um, very close to zero where the wells just continue to produce the same amount. In the United States and unconventional wells, we have high production decline curves. So what does that mean? Well, the demand for oil and gas in the United States is rising every single day. It is still rising. Um, renewable energy hasn't gotten us to the point where demand has plateaued. Oil demand is still rising every day in the United States and around the world. Um, so you have a scenario where demand is rising at the same time our current inventory of wells are all declining at the exact same time. And what that means is you have to continue drilling new wells every day just to maintain the exact same production level. So let me paint a picture for you. Um, since Joe Biden has taken office, I think we have increased production by about 1.2 to 1.3 million barrels of oil a day. In order to achieve an overall production increase of 1.2 to 1.3 million barrels of oil a day, you actually have to increase production by easily a couple of million barrels of oil a day and more like 2.2, 2.3 million barrels of oil a day. That is how much new oil we've had to put on the market to get a daily production increase of 1.2 million barrels a day because all of the wells in the United States are declining every day. And you have to drill thousands of wells every year in the United States just to maintain a, a steady state of production. So if your production was 12 million barrels a day and you wanted to continue producing 12 million barrels a day next year, you got to drill a lot of wells just to continue the exact same production number because wells decline. That's what they do. Now, after a period of time, um, year over year over year, that decline rate becomes less and less and less, you know. So yeah, it's like 40% first year decline rate in the Permian. Second year, it's probably closer to 25 to 30%. When you get into that fourth and fifth year, those decline rates 
are down five, six, seven percent. And what that means is that well produces X amount of oil and it declines to a point. And once it gets down to a point, and just for the sake of using a number, let's say once it gets down to 50 barrels of oil a day, it'll kind of just stay right there for years. And it will slowly decline over years, but it'll pretty much stay. You know, it'll, you know, it might do 50 barrels of oil a day for an entire year, and then it might drop to like 49, you know. So the decline rate kind of, it doesn't completely go away after a long enough time frame, but it does stop declining so drastically. So we have to maintain a healthy rig count and we have to maintain a healthy oil and gas industry just to meet demand. You know, um, even if demand stayed exactly where it was and stopped going up, we would have to continue drilling thousands of wells every year because of the decline rates of all of the other wells. And that is why, even though we are at maximum refining capacity, we have to continue drilling new wells. Because if we just stopped drilling wells today, we would know, it, in a matter of a couple of weeks, we wouldn't be at maximum refining capacity anymore unless we started importing everything to offset. So that is the answer to question number one. That is why we have to always continue drilling. It is the production decline curve of unconventional wells in the United States. The second question I had, um, subscriber asked me, is about Saudi Arabia. Why is Saudi Arabia going green when they have so much oil? So if you don't know, Saudi Arabia has very aggressive targets for, you know, net zero emissions, for being, you know, 100% renewable. They want to be 50% renewable energy in seven years. So, and right now they're less than 1%. <clears throat> so why does a country that produces so much oil and gas want to go green? And that is because leaders around the world, especially people in the oil and gas business, understand uh, the concept of peak oil. Now, there's a couple of different definitions here, but, but the first, most important, peak oil, is the maximum amount of oil that we can reasonably and sustainably produce over a long period of time per day. So there is a number out there and we're not quite sure what it is, but let's say peak oil is 110 million barrels of oil a day. That means that the world can produce 110 million barrels of oil a day and sustain that. And we can't do much more than that. We're going to get to a point where the demand for oil is going to exceed that number. Um, so it is very important that we start um, building, uh, building out infrastructure and adding as much renewable energy all over the world as we possibly can. Because what you don't want is for demand to exceed peak oil. Because if we are still that reliant on oil, when we get to a point where we can't produce that much every single day, you are going to see oil prices like you've never seen before. You could you could see oil go three, four, five hundred dollars a barrel. Even OPEC understands this, and even Saudi Arabia understands this. Like we're getting close. We're getting close to that cross-sectional or intersectional area where peak oil and demand meet. And you never want those two to meet. Because then you start having shortages. Um, then you cannot produce enough oil to meet demand. So OPEC or Saudi Arabia uh, going completely green is not a negative thing. It doesn't mean they're going to stop selling oil. It means that they understand that the demand for energy in the world is perpetually growing. Like the demand for energy, it's not going to go down. As, as long as the population of the world is growing, the demand for that energy is growing and there is only so much oil and gas we can produce. There's only so much that we can sustainably produce every single day. And we don't know exactly what that number is, but we have a pretty good idea of the range that number is in. 
I think it's around 110 million barrels a day. And if you look out forecast five, six, seven years ahead of now, you start seeing experts predict demand being around that number. And when global demand is getting close to the number that you believe is the maximum you can produce, that's scary. So that is why, you know, in addition to the climate and helping the climate, that is why we need to continue with more and more and more alternative sources of energy, whether it's renewable, whether it's nuclear, it doesn't matter where it comes from. We need the energy, period. Um, if you don't like renewable energy, too bad. If you don't like nuclear energy, too bad. We are going to need the energy. Um, once demand exceeds all of our um, energy producing capabilities, we're in a really bad place. Um, and that is when all energy becomes very expensive. And that's when it starts getting rationed. And that's when you start seeing um, mostly the poor and disadvantaged around the world. They'll be the ones left in the dark. Um, the rich people around the world, the wealthy people, they're going to be fine. Don't worry about them. So peak oil from a aspect of peak oil production. Um, there is another term for peak oil, and that is peak oil demand. And that is when we get to the point where demand will be as high as it will ever be because other forms of energy and other sources of energy take over a large enough footprint in the market to where we actually start needing less oil and that number starts to, and that demand number starts to go down. Um, that is another example of a peak demand number in the oil and gas industry. A lot of people think that peak demand um, is the end of oil and gas. It's absolutely not. Um, oil and gas will be around for a very, very long time, well beyond our lifetimes, well beyond our kids' lifetimes. Um, but people are very critical of energy sources that they're uncomfortable with. So if you work in the oil and gas industry, it is likely you are critical of other forms of energy because you're worried about your job. You shouldn't be worried about your job. Trust me, you should not be worried about your job. Oil is here to stay for a very long time. And just because we start making more energy to offset the increases in demand doesn't mean that oil is going away. It, it does not mean that whatsoever. So that is why Saudi Arabia and a lot of countries around the world are pushing heavily towards renewables. It's not because they have this fairy tale of getting rid of oil altogether. It's that they understand that the total demand for all energy in the world is going to get to a point where the oil and gas industry simply cannot sustain the demand anymore. We've always had this luxury where the oil and gas industry was enough to sustain and meet all demands for energy. Well, we're close to getting to a point where that's not going to be the case anymore. And so we need as much and as many sources of alternative energies like I said, whether it's renewable, whether it's nuclear, doesn't matter what kind. Wind, solar, hydroelectric, anything they can dream of. We're going to need that. We're going to need that just to meet our overall energy demands. It's not, I know a lot of pit politicians and a lot of people view it as an attack on oil, and that's fine. But it's really just meeting our energy needs in the future because they're only getting higher and higher and higher. Now, another thing about Saudi Arabia, as you know, it is mostly a giant desert. Like it is, it is literally mostly a, a giant desert. And Saudi Arabia can produce a lot of electricity with solar farms in the desert. These, this would be the cheapest mode of <laughs> producing energy. Um, they have vast open areas, no trees, sun shines directly on the solar panels. Like this is the ideal spot to build solar farms and extract the most amount of electricity out of them. Um, so for me, I think it would actually be very easy for Saudi Arabia to get to that 50% renewable number. One, because the geography of the, of the country, it's a giant desert. 
you fill up the desert with solar panels, you, you generate a ton of electricity. And two, Saudi Arabia doesn't actually consume a great deal of oil and gas. And that is why oil and gas is so cheap within Saudi Arabia. Because they are one of the world's largest producers, but they are not a large consumer. And what that means is they have excess gasoline, excess diesel. All that stuff is really cheap there because they're just awash in it. That, that's why it's so cheap. The reason gas is so high in the United States is because we use so much of it. You know, that we, we consume more of gas than any country in the world. Um, we're lucky that we're not paying more than any other country in the world for gas. Um, so when people complain about gas prices, they should understand where they live, how much we consume, how much we produce. We should probably be paying even more than we are, if you think about it. There's a lot of countries that don't consume a lot of gas where it's really expensive. So Saudi Arabia going green, I think it's going to be fairly easy, sticking solar panels in a desert, generating a lot of electricity, um, just kind of doing their part to assist in the overall energy demand that we're seeing in the future. So that's the two answers to those two questions. I hope this video was educational. I hope it was, what's the word? I hope it informed you. <laughs> Still getting used to this YouTube format. Um, but anyway, like, subscribe, share my stuff. I'm going to try to get better at making these videos. But this is pretty much what I do right here. This is it. This is this is me. I, I don't see it getting too flashy. Although it could. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it will. Anyway, you guys have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed the uh, explanations and the content. And I'll see you guys later.